praise the Lord, brethren. God is good. And it's always a joy. It's always a joy, a joy to speak about God's word because it is um, what it means to us. And we can't be unless God is on our side. And so let us pray as we begin again. Father God in heaven, we thank you that you give us every opportunity to share. And now this is another one. We pray, Father, that you bless us, sending your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide. And as we think through, we pray the Lord, you enable us to live a life that pleases you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for the life, the opportunity that he gives us every day, every day. When you wake up, you open your eyes. Thanks be to God. You're able to stretch. Thanks be to God, because that is uh, his grace. His favor that he has bestowed upon us. Now, as we dive into this segment of our episodes, and we appreciate God that in finding him is life. And it means a lot when you speak to somebody who fears God, someone who treasures his word. Now, this time, I want to begin with a little song. And this little song is in Uganda, just one stanza which speaks about god's word and in Uganda, but it goes ebi gambo bya kato nda bikuli so moyo go nda bo bye kanyera botyo bola ba emirembeje mukosaba mono erwa amagezi na manyi Okugoba abalave beba kulumbo bubi. Now those of you who know Luganda, this is one of the morning songs that we sing in Chabu Onozu Kukanga. When you are waking up in the morning, and I just particularly picked this stanza number three, because it talks about God's word feeds you feeds you and when you sit down and meditate upon it think through is when you dive into his peace and peace is what we desire and it also says that in prayer this is when you are given the strength you are given the power to fight to walk to do and fighting against the evil one and so this stanza sets me back ground that in God's word is when we get the power, when we get the strength, and when we dive into prayer, we position ourselves to work. And so this day, this moment, I thank God that actually this, it may not, it might not have been the best of the voices, but I look for the meaning. And so this time, we continue with our personalities and this always forms the basis of our engagement, of our, you know, speaking together, thinking together, interacting together. And the person that I come with just to spread, not to spread before you, is the prophet Jeremiah. You remember, we started on the books of the prophets. And the prophets, the way they are arranged in our Bible, I have already mentioned several things, the characteristics and a few things about the writing prophets, the non-writing prophets, the true prophets, the false prophets, now the major prophets, the minor prophets. And so the way they are arranged in our Bible, Jeremiah is one of those that falls under the category of what we call major prophets. And not that the message that they gave was, the, was what makes them a major. Of course, we have the small ones that we shall also look at. The message was from God. But the arrangers of the Bible looked at several factors, and one of the factors was about the volume of the work that someone did. And so Jeremiah falls among those that gave the bigger volume of the work that they did because his book follows exactly after Isaiah. Isaiah with 66 is one of the, is the bigger with 66 six chapters and Jeremiah in the 50s, 50, 52, 53 chapters is also big. 
And then we shall be following like that. And so Jeremiah is one of the prophets that actually we are going to get into today, this moment. And um, he delivers his message just like any other prophet. But like I've always said, we talk about these personalities. Now Jeremiah is the one that we're talking about. Will there be anything that actually that you'll pick, that you'll pick from and be able to learn something for your being, to make you the kind of person that God desires. And so you'll discover that actually in Jeremiah, we're going to dive into his message. But of course, it's a long book. But this, to set our, our you know, to set our, 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 our study going, chapter one gives us the basis. But before I do that, we look at um, what we mean by Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in, in Hebrew, Jeremiah, and uh, God exalts and things related to exalting and God lifting you up. And so I pray that actually God will, will do something in your life like he did for Jeremiah, like he did for Jeremiah. And so friends, we shall base ourselves on chapter one. But before we go to chapter one, just a little overview. Chapter one is about Jeremiah's call. And it's where we're going to concentrate because in his call is the basis of the message. The message comes wide and big. But we're going to read that chapter, a few verses, and then we shall ask ourselves a few things, the implications of that message. And then it will give us the overview of the book of Jeremiah. And then we shall do something in another episode and something else in another episode and we shall conclude Jeremiah. And so chapters two, to chapter 25, it is a big section that describes Jeremiah's early reproof and admonitions concerning the guilt of the kingdom of Judah. Now, before God does something, he warns. And so in Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1, following, it's all about, you know, Jeremiah speaking, giving the prophecies, describing, I mean, what would come concerning the guilt concerning the challenges that the, that the Judah people, the, king of, the kingdom of Judah was facing and the punishment that was coming. And so in everything that we do, whether it was Jeremiah's time or even now, God desires that actually people must know his word and people must know what will be the outcome of your actions. What you do, what you say, how you behave, has repercussions, has effects. And so in Jeremiah, he gives the admonitions, he gives um, his words of rebuke, of correction, telling the people, this is what you should do, this is not what you should do. You do this, this is the impact. You do this, this is the effect. And God actually prepares us, the people that can speak, the people can, can reach people, and this is what he gives. And then he continues on in this same segment, challenges them on false religion. You know, that actually there are lots of falsehoods that come and the people begin speaking things, deceiving themselves. And we're not any different friends from what happened during Jeremiah's time. And very, very key is in chapter seven, when um, he, he had a sermon that he preached to them in chapter 7 at the, at the temple. And he was telling them, stand at the gate of the Lord's temple and proclaim. And when you read that chapter, you'd see that actually people deceiving themselves because they go to the temple to pray. Just like we do ourselves. You know, someone says, after I go to church, after I was baptized, after I was immersed, after I... But if your actions do not move along with what God wants, then it is actually different. And also, the next segment is Jeremiah's events, life events in chapters 26 to 45. Now this one gives the whole life of Jeremiah, the events that happened to him, and the events that happened before the fall of the kingdom of Judah, and the keys, the conflict that he had with the religious leaders of the time. And chapter 26, when you read it, you will discover that there's a lot, that pericope from 26 1 to 29. You discover that Jeremiah fights very many things. He portrays, he, he portrays his message um, is illustrative. God gives him a message, he's the conveyor of the message. And so he carries it. 
and he illustrates it with very many things. And one of the illustrations was actually the yoke. He was told to put a yoke on his neck and, uh, and move about with it. Just like Jeremiah, just like Isaiah, just like any other prophet that God used. They would use symbolisms. They would use illustrations. And so that the message is conveyed in the most relevant manner. And so what we strive for, even the preachers of today, we also strive to be relevant to the people, to understand the message. And so Jeremiah would be, whenever he would be told, do this, he would do it for the benefit of the people to understand fully. What is important is people to engage with God's word. And so Jeremiah gives us the basis here uh, because he encourages the people, but also rebukes them and he demonstrates the message to the people to understand it well. Because everything that we do, everything that we say has repercussions and whatever we say, whatever we do, God, God desires us to be mindful of what comes thereafter. And so he gives a message of restoration. He gives the message of um, whatever it would be basing on the actions. And then the next segment is Jeremiah's prophecies concerning other nations. And this is in chapters 46 to the end. Now, this proves to us, friends, that God is a God of nations. God does not segregate. What happens to Israel also happens to Uganda. What happens to Uganda also happens to other nations. And God is a God of all the earth. He created everything and he created all he desires justice. If he desires justice to happen in Uganda, it's the same thing that actually will happen when it, there's injustice elsewhere, whether in other countries or where. So when you talk about Jeremiah talking about nations, in chapters 46 following, God does not segregate. He desires everywhere his word to be preached, his love to be felt. And so this is the whole thing that actually talk about the book of Jeremiah. Now, having said that, listen to the message that comes in chapter one, because actually you cannot understand that entire message without looking at his call and his birth circumstances. I just want to read the first 10 verses, and then we shall ask a few of the things that actually want to know, and then we shall learn something from the prophet Jeremiah. What encourages me is to pick something from these people. And so that, like I've always said, so that I can be the kind of man that God is saying he is pleased. Just like David, a man after God's own heart. And whatever circumstances, that, whatever challenges, whatever sins, whatever, but there are some things actually that we learn from these people, David and the rest. So here is Jeremiah. Now the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were an toth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord, remember, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and in the 13th year of his reign, it came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, and until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Remember? And what you need to know also is that actually Jeremiah prophesied in the reign five kings. Spanning five kings, we have Josiah, we have Jehoahaz, we have Jeho Jehoiakim, we have Jeho Jehoiakim and Zedekiah. And so he, he did that message in the reign of five men, five kings. Now, in verse 4, now the word of the Lord came to me. Now, he's not testifying what height came, and what came, and why it came. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. This is important. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. 
for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whether I command you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Verse 8. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Then the Lord, verse 9, put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Now, many times we have read this and doesn't do harm to read it again. Verses 1 to 10. But we can read on. But because of the time, we cannot finish what we are reading. Now, just look at the message that God gives to Jeremiah. One, before you were born, I knew you. And all of us have quoted this many times. And this is most important. Before you are going out to say that you are a preacher, be it on the street, be it in the pulpit, be it in the church, wherever, be it now, the call, your call matters. Now, it is God that calls, it's God that empowers, it's God that actually will shield you. Because Jeremiah actually gives us this entire message, it was a difficult one though. And you realize that actually during the time that God calls him, he gives him this message and says, before you were born, I knew you. And I send you before the nations. Now, this is important. That having known that actually God is the one that has called you, that God is the one that has positioned you, that God is the one that has given you the word. Then you go with confidence because the call is preparatory. Remember, ministry is not a cheap thing. Ministry is not just a walkover. We have read about men, Moses, Joshua. We have read about those early men. Elijah, Elisha, not his at all. It's not for enjoyment, like many people want to perceive that it is today. But yes, it has good things that we enjoy, but ministry carries with it two things, positive and negative. And the reason why Jeremiah was given two messages, one was a positive message. Positive message comes at the end of verse 10 to build and to plant. But the negative message that is, which makes people uncomfortable is what God is telling him to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow. Now, those, those things are not actually, are not nice to hear. People only want to hear building and planting. And so Jeremiah faced a lot of challenges and so what we learn from this man is that actually God called him before he was born and he was born in a priest family. And meaning, friends, I want to draw these very, very few lessons there. One, who called you? Before you call yourself a minister, evangelist, a pastor, a reverend, a bishop, name it. Who called you? From whom did you get the message? Because we, we are all about and over everywhere. Preachers here and there. How many Jeremiah's were there at that time? That actually, um, because actually everywhere would be. But now who called you? Is the question that I want to leave with you today. Now, circumstances of Jeremiah's birth is another issue. That was born in a priestly family. But look at the time that he received the message. He even says, I'm too young, I can't speak. Now, the circumstances of our family vis-a-vis -vis ministry. Now, is it, will our children feel comfortable when they are called to be pastors like we are? When they are called to be bishops like we are? Like when they are called to be reverends like we are? When they are called to be preachers like we are. I'm using generative terms now, like we are, like we are. 
Can our children do it? Because they will be watching the things that actually we go through. First of all, the, you know, not nice things all the time that we go through. So will the children enjoy seeing you being ridiculed, being abused, being bitten, being... And so they say, hmm, shall I become a minister? Or when you, are do, when you are having nice times, when in building and planting, you know, you're having nice things, all those, can they encourage them to join ministry? So the circumstances in our families where we are born can also have a message to our young ones. Now Jeremiah looks at himself as a neighbor, looks at himself as young, but God puts his word in his mouth. And so my desire is actually whatever we do, whatever we say in ministry, wherever we are, may God put his word in our mouth. We shall look at another prophet and see Isaiah we saw how he was called, Jeremiah, and he is, is one of them here. And so it is important. And one other thing that you learn from Jeremiah here, I admired it very, very much, and I should have begun with it, that the book bears his name. And every time I read about this man, whose names appear in the word of God in the Bible here, challenging, challenging, challenging something in my heart is, what can I do? What can I say? How can I behave? How can I act? The time will tell that every dad in Milton she said, ever lived here. That I, I ever did something that will speak even after I'm no more. Now, Jeremiah, the name bears his name. I mean, the book bears his name. Like others have. What have you done? Maybe I've asked it before in many, many other episodes, but I see it again. What does, what does your name mean to others that see you, the works that you do? Are you a young person? Are you an adult? Are you a local person? Are you a leader? What good are you doing like Jeremiah did? That, do you have anything that bears your name? That actually people will refer to importantly and so while we're still breathing pray the lord while we're still alive may god enable us to do something to say something that will be helpful and jeremiah leaves us a, a mark in his 50 over chapters there's something that actually has done chronological and the nice things that he did that he went through speak to us and the hard times, the agonies. Remember, Jeremiah is called a weeping prophet. And that is what we're going to talk, to, talk about the next moment, in the next episode, is possibly. Now, those weeping times, and all of us actually face these challenges, whatever they are. But what is it that they are leaving behind that God is people will learn about, will learn from, from us? And this is the message that Jeremiah brings. And it is... He, he said, I'll put my words in your mouth. And so like, like I said, two things moving together, positive and negative. Now here, there is repentance is very, very key. And writers have said that actually one of the prophets that have written much about repentance and hope is Jeremiah. Now, these two work together, repentance and hope. And repentance and hopelessness, of course. Now, this is important, and it's a message that is carried all through. God desires that we, human beings, if we're not doing something good, we relent, we change, we move away and face God's word. So his message of repentance is a message of another chance, another opportunity. So God gives another opportunity. And the Israelites, the people of Judah, were given other chances. The reason why you find at one moment, condemnations, you know, blame of the evil things that they were doing. But repentance, falling down, coming down, and God listens, God sees, and offers another opportunity, another time, another chance. So here we are, friends, that the message was coming to Jeremiah. Two things, destruction and building. Now, this is something that Jeremiah lives with us. That actually we do good. God is happy. God 
desires. I mean, he also laughs and feels happy. He's pleased with these people. But when you do otherwise, God gets angry, annoyed, and punishment comes. So this message, friends, may God enable you to pick something from this prophet, Jeremiah, a young man. And so, young people, may God bless you. He grows up, he becomes a prophet. I mean, he goes, he goes, he goes nations. He preaches about nations. He's facing kings. He's facing uh, religious leaders. He's facing who? May God give you the courage. May God give you the energy. May God give you the strength. Now, Jeremiah leaves a lesson to us, and I pray that as you shall be scanning, I'm just opening this, so that you scan through the book of Jeremiah, read through once in a while, you know, there are messages there. And of course, there are key passages that I will give you in another episode that actually people keep looking for. But now, what is God speaking to you? Before you were born, I knew you, and I called you. I put you there as a prophet to the nations. May God spread his love, his care to you and to me and so that we shall live relevantly in our generation and so that time will tell what good we have done and the good his name will be praised in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>